Hi, my name is Rana G and I'm a Photoshop product manager at Adobe Systems. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to create this 3D PSD Toots logo using Photoshop CS5 Extended. The first thing I'm going to do is open up this start file. PSD Toots start. The second thing I want to do is actually come up here to my workspaces and choose 3D. Now your workspace is going to look a little bit different than mine, but most importantly I want to point out the 3D panel here as well as the layers panel. These are the two panels that I want to have exposed right now. So let's take a look at what's inside this uh, file. This file consists of three layers. The first layer is just the simple red background box. And then we have the second layer here that I've used uh, to create a vector mask using type and also simple shapes. And I combine them into a single uh, path that I'm going to use to extrude into 3D. Now we're actually going to take this work path and extrude into our first, three, our first 3D object. So go ahead and make sure that you have the work path selected here in the layers panel. And then over here in the 3D panel, you'll notice that at the bottom, you have all the different ways that you can create new 3D objects. You can also find these same commands up here in the 3D menu. New postcard from layer, new shape from layer, where you can actually take a 2D background layer and wrap it around any of these geometries. New mesh from grayscale from depth maps, or this option called repose. Okay, so back here in the 3D panel, for our source, we're actually going to choose the work path, okay? And then down here at the bottom, you'll notice the 3D repose object option. Repose is actually a word, a French word for an art form that is similar to embossing, where you can take thin sheets of metal and push them in or out. And that's why we're calling this 3D repose object, because essentially what you're doing is you're taking a 2D layer, it could be a type layer, it could be pixel layer, selections, etc., and you're extruding it and pushing it out into real 3D geometry. So go ahead and click Create now. This dialog is telling me that the shape will be rasterized, so it's important to notice that your text layer or your shape layer is actually complete before you want to actually create it into 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And now you'll see here that we're in the repose dialog. Now this repose dialog essentially allows me to create my base geometry for my 3D object as well as a couple of other things like adding different looks or materials, um, different lighting settings, or perhaps different render settings. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the workspace here in the repose dialog. The first thing you're going to notice right away is that I have a 3D object. You can go ahead and just click on my canvas and you can see that I have a nice preview. Up here in the left hand corner, you're going to notice a 3D axis widget that I've moved out of the way here. Now this axis widget, if you don't see it, down here at the bottom of the panel is where you can actually expose all your different overlays. The 3D axis is just an overlay that allows you to rotate, roll, reposition your 3D object. So down here at the bottom of the repose panel, you'll notice all the different uh, overlays that I can expose. I can go ahead and turn off the 3D axis. I can turn on the 3D ground plane. I have 3D lights. These are my different light widgets. Um, and also the 3D uh, selection, which essentially is drawing a bounding box around my 3D object. But for now, let's go ahead and turn on the 3D axis and turn the other um, overlays off. Okay, so this 3D axis allows me to do all the different types of 3D rotations that I want. You can see here that I, as I place my cursor over different parts of an axis, I can um, roll my object, I can also slide, I can even scale, and I can do all the different types of rotations amongst either the X, Y, or Z axis. Furthermore, down here on the left side of the repose panel are all the tools that allow me to do the same types of rotations. So you can see here I have my rotate tool, I have my roll tool, my pan tool, my slide, scale, etc. And then my return to initial mesh position, return to home here. Let's go ahead and um, start creating the extrusion that I want for this particular project. Now. Um, 
Up here on the first left-hand corner of the Repose dialog are simple shape presets, okay, geometry presets. You can click through here to kind of experiment with the different types of uh, manipulations you can do for the geometry. But for now, let's go ahead and leave the first uh, simple extrusion preset selected. And now I'm going to actually come in here to the second box down here, the extrude box, and refine my selection just a little bit further. Starting here with the depth, what I'm going to do is rotate my object into a position where I can actually see the depth or the extrusion, and let's drop that down to 0.5. Okay, um, and we can even bring it down a little bit further, maybe to 0.3. You notice also that if I place my cursor over any of the, the text labels here, I have that scrubby slider that I can use to uh, manipulate the geometry. But for now, this is pretty good. I want a nice, simple extrusion on this text layer. And um, other than that, I think I'm pretty much done in f as far as the ge geometry is concerned. Now, one thing you'll probably notice that is with this uh, uh, geometry here, that the P and the D, the holes inside the P and D, aren't punched through. Now I want to point out that if this was brought in as a text layer, we do actually treat text specially, where we know when we want to actually punch through the inside um, paths or selection and make it a hole. Now for paths, we can never really know whether or not a user would like to uh, leave that filled or actually punch that into a hole. So we bring in all subpaths as non-active filled um, geometry. So the first thing I want to do is actually select this internal subpath, which we call constraints, and punch that through to make it a hole. Starting with the P, let's go down here to the internal constraints tab. Now you might have this closed initially. Go ahead and click on that arrow to open up the properties and choose the first tool or any of the tools here and come over here and click on that. And you can see that we outline the internal subpath or constraint. Now for type, I'm going to actually choose hole. And you'll see that Repose now punches a hole through this object. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is select the inside of the D and again select hole. Okay. Now go back up here to the upper left and select your 3D mesh rotation tool and you'll see that I have actually punched holes um, with, uh, in, with the internal subpath. The next thing I want to do is show you a little bit about materials. Now materials are what define the look of the object. It can be as simple as a color or it could be complex as maybe a metal or an organic, op uh, organic uh, material that's made up of a bunch of different maps that define what the material looks like. For instance, if I was going to ap apply a chrome material or perhaps this marble material, this marble material is made up of a dif uh, different types of maps. It might be a shininess map, there might be a little bit of a reflection map, there's also a texture on that giving me that marbled look, etc. So that is what we mean when we say materials. Now for now what I'm going to do is actually choose a simple white material. I'm going to come over here to the flyout of my materials panel and actually choose plastic. Now if you don't have um, this extended list of materials, let's go ahead and just append that for now, let me quickly show you where you can get them. Let's go ahead and OK out of this dialog. And up here in the 3D menu again, at the very bottom, you'll notice this Browse 3D Content Online. If I click it, we'll be taken to this uh, Photoshop 3D page. And if I scroll down to the middle of the page, you'll notice Material Downloads. And here is where I can find all the different material libraries that are free for anyone who has purchased Photoshop CS5 Extended. You can click Download, double click it, and it'll automatically install to the correct location. Okay, back in Photoshop here now, we have our 3D object, but I want to get back into that Repose dialog. So the way I can do that is I can come over here to the 3D menu, under Repose, I can choose Edit in Repose, 
okay? Alternatively, I can go to my 3D panel, which now you can see actually contains all my different scene properties. I have my mesh, I have all the different materials, I have my lights, etc. But we'll talk about this a little bit further as we get through the tutorial. For now, I want to get back into the Repose dialog. And the way I do that from the panel here is I choose the second filter here, which is Filter by Meshes. And at the very bottom, I have this R button, Repose button, and I can go ahead and click that, and it'll bring me back into the Repose dialog. Okay, now that we're back in here, I want to actually apply that white plastic material. So in my materials section of my Repose dialog, you can see here that I can apply materials to all the faces, the front face, the bevel, the sides, or, or the, be the back bevel, or the back. So for now, let's go ahead and choose all. And I'm going to scroll down here to choose maybe a shiny white plastic, okay? We've got the glossy plastic there, matte plastic, and a textured plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the white one. Now I want to point out that these materials that we create here are initially set with just one color, but it's very easy to come in here and select one of these materials and go back outside of the Repose dialog to change the color. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So now I have my uh, plastic on here, and another thing I want to point out is you're not seeing the final render of this, right? By default, Photoshop works in a GL rendering uh, mode, which initially allows you to have the fastest interaction. Okay, in order to see the final properties of the material, so the final lighting, the final shininess, the final reflection, all the light effects that you want to see on your object that give you that realistic look, you want to actually use the Photoshop Ray Tracer. Okay? But we're not going to use that right now. We're going to wait until we're near the end of the project uh, before I turn on the Ray Tracer. But for now, let's go ahead and work in this GL mode. Okay. So now I have my base material and my base geometry, and I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and just say OK. A couple things I want to point out in the 3D workspace now, now that we have a 3D layer. In my layers panel, you can see that my PS Tooth la layer, the one I had the vector mask on, is now a 3D object, indicated by this cube here in the layers panel. This 3D object is its own 3D scene. It has its own lights, it has its own cameras, it has its own effects, it's, it owns its own scene. And it can be composited with any 2D background, any 2D layer, smart objects, layer effects, filters, etc. Further, it can also be composited with another 3D layer. So you can have multiple 3D layers and multiple 2D layers, ultimately creating your final composite. Okay, let's go ahead and start building this composite now. With the 3D layer selected, in my 3D panel, I'm going to choose this first fil filter button. Okay, This shows me all the different scene properties in my, in my 3D layer. At the, at the si left side at the bottom of the panel, now if you don't see the same parameters that, that I have on my screen here, make sure you have this first scene line item selected. Because you'll notice here that as I click through the different properties, the bottom half of the panel dynamically updates and uh, displays the types of parameters that you'll need. So you can see when I have a light selected, I have all the light parameters. If I have a material selected, I have the material panel, material parameters, and mesh, etc. So make sure you have that top scene uh, layer selected. Now down here on the left hand side here, you're going to see a bunch of tools. Select that first tool. The first tool is your object rotation tool. Okay? By selecting it, you're going to see here that my 3D axis comes up, if I have that overlay uh, on. And also, in, on the left-hand side in my toolbar, we also have the object rotation tool selected. Okay? We have the object rotation tools here, as well as the camera manipulation tools here. Okay? The next thing I want to show you is how I can change the color of my 3D object. Now, come over here to your 3D panel and choose the third filter, the third button here up here at the top, and that's going to filter by all my different materials. So you'll see here I have my front material, I have my front bevel material, but in this example I actually don't have a bevel, so it doesn't matter. I have an extrusion material, or the sides, I have a back material, and a, a back facing material. Let's go ahead and choose the front material, and down here at the bottom you'll notice all the different maps that make up this material. Uh, the diffuse map is actually the color, the, the map that defines the color of the object. So if I want to change the color of this object, I simply click on this diffuse um, button and it, it pops to my color picker and you can see here that as I change my color, 
my uh, object is reflected there. Okay, let's just go ahead and choose white again, and um, that's how you can change your color. Okay.